Greetings, glitter goddesses, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for the December Daily Paper Bag album. We're going to be working on the inserts for pages 18, 20, 22, and 24 now. So let me get out my piece of paper where I wrote down all of the measurements for this. <laughs> All right, that's this and feel free to take a picture with your phone or screenshot this to so that you have all the measurements. What I'm doing right now is down here in this corner, these inserts. So I'm hoping I'll have enough brown cardstock. I was running very, very low on brown cardstock. So we shall see. The first thing I need to do is, oh, I should cu cut these, and I have one insert done already, plus two, uh, the, the two three and a quarter by four and a quarter cards. So these guys, these um, cardstock pockets are six and a quarter by three and a quarter, which is a pinwheel, which is a pinwheel. So let me start by doing a single pinwheel so that I can get, well, actually I only need two of those, right? Yeah, I only need two. So maybe I won't do a pinwheel. That's not where I'll start. I'll start with, Jill says this is why you should never throw away car sock. You are right. I didn't throw it away, but you are still correct. Maybe I shouldn't have given it to people. Should have been like, sorry, people, I'm keeping it. I don't care how much your art department is struggling. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to have to order some more of this cardstock, which is the bark color from uh, the Smooth and Silky. I may have to stitch some pieces together. We shall see. I may have to make my own cardstocks. All right, so I've got three of these, which is all I need. Now I need three pieces that are seven and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I've got two, so I think what I'll do is so that I don't have to cut into a new piece of paper f yet, f just for that last one, I'm gonna cut my two cardstock bases and see what I have left over that I can use. So I need two that are six and a quarter by five and three quarters for those. All right, so I've got the two of those out and I can get one more of those seven and a half inch pieces out of the, um, seven and a quarter by four and a quarter inch pieces out of what's left. So I'm actually was able to do it. I have only one sheet of cardstock left from the pack. So it does take about one whole 25 pack of cardstock 
to get all of your pockets, inserts, and um, all of your pockets, inserts, and whatnot. So, all right. So I'm going to set the cardstock base pieces aside. We'll do those in another video. And for now, we're just going to work on these inserts. Okay. So let's get my dreaded score pal. And we're going to score all the seven and a quarter inch by four and a quarter inch pieces along the seven and a quarter inch side at six and a quarter. You need a total of four. I'm only doing three because I already have one right here. And the ones that are nine and a half by four and a quarter, you're going to score um, at six and a quarter as well. So they all get scored at six and a quarter. All right, fold along all the score lines and burnish like usual. We need to turn fold along all the score lines and burnish into an acronym. Fold along all the score lines and burnish fat slab fat slab guys make sure you fat slab Make sure you fat slap. <laughs> All right, so on the backs of, oh, make it fab, fold and burnish. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's the right, that's better than fat slab for sure. So just say, it. make it fab. And then that's what we'll do. <laughs> that's much better. Thank you. Thanks to <laughs> Shaka for saving us from Fat Slab <laughs> and making us. Fat Slab is funnier. It's true. I don't know. Well, maybe we'll have to vote tomorrow. We'll have to vote. We'll have to vote tomorrow. We'll put it to a vote. We'll say, do you want it to? Do you want it to be Fat Slab or F Fat Slab it or Fab it? I don't know. I think Fast Lab's gonna win, guys. I think Fast Lab's gonna win. And I'll make you guys Fat Slab t shirts now. And <laughs> people will be like, what in the heck? <laughs> All right. So it's I, I I have a feeling Fast Lab is, is gonna win. I think Fast Lab is gonna win. Fab is cuter. We're glitter goddesses. We can take it. That's true. That's true. That's true. All right, glitter goddesses, fat slab. See, there we go. That's what we'll say from now on. All right, so once you have fat slabbed, 
burnish your tape well. <laughs> Can you? Because you want it to be stuck down well. And burnishing helps with that. Then remove the tape from one of each. Can you imagine the comments? What the heck? And then I'm going to slide the smaller one down until it hits the score line. So I don't, I'm not going all the way to the flap. I just wanted to hit the bottom of the score line. Then fold it over and burnish. Remove the tape from one of each. Slide it down until it hits the score line. Burnish. Remove one of each. Slide it down until it hits the score line. Burnish. <laughs> okay, so now we've got all four of them and we're ready to go. This one, where's our, okay, here's the one that has our connection piece. This one is all jacked up. Um, I mean, this piece will get fixed by the one that goes here. The question is, what should we do about this one? Maybe I should just make a new one. I have one piece of paper left, but then I can't screw up on anything. <laughs> then I cannot screw up. I'm going to make it work. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Okay, so good start. First thing we're gonna do is get our four, uh, we're gonna do three Project Life cards of the three by four size and one of the four by six size. And the one that's four by six is gonna help stabilize the Franken piece. So we're just going to get one of these. All right. So I'm going to ink all of these and stick them down. So yeah, so my next step in this album is on Friday, I'm gonna go to the library and get a guide to Tampa and pick out a bunch of stuff to do in December. And it doesn't have to be strictly like Christmas stuff, but just stuff that we think would be fun and then we'll do it in Christmas during during December wearing Christmas clothes and then it'll look like I have an active and full life when the reality is I almost never leave my house. So <laughs> how long have we been in Tampa? This will be in November in November will be the start of our third year living here. Now, one year was really taken up by my health and dealing with all of that. So, um, I think it's kind of understandable that I didn't really, you know, explore the city. But the other year, I don't have an excuse. I don't have an excuse. Yeah. that Yeah, I don't count that year um, because 
it was all to I had I had to be completely focused on that. I spent a ton of time in different doctor's offices and hospitals getting test after test after test and having this and that thing monitored. Um, but I don't know if I remember to mention I had my one year appointment with my cardiologist um, who said I was normal. And that was the last thing I had to do to get. So he said to come back in a year, but he and check on him. Between Miami and Tampa, which do, which do you like better? Mm, that's a temperament thing, I think. Both cities have their pluses and both cities have their minuses. Um, Miami traffic is worse. But the Miami lifestyle, the kind of attitude of the people that live there is very chill. So, and they call it tropical is what they call it. That's their word for sort of like, I'm cool. I'm just being chill. Uh, and that's, um, so people take two hour lunches. People enjoy going out to dinner. People enjoy, you know, going out in the evening. And there's definitely a very much work to live attitude versus live to work. Whereas Tampa is much more like the average American big city in that there's more, it's more the opposite of, it's m more of a work to live attitude. Now, neither of these cities attitudes compares at all towards Washington DC, which is stress powerville. And we really didn't like it at all. So they're both better than that. Is Tampa more family friendly? Absolutely. Tampa is definitely more family friendly. It has a nightlife scene. Of course it does. It's a, it's a big city and it has a youthful population. Like there are pe younger people like it. But it's not all totally about going out. There's a lot of like parks, tons of parks. It's definitely much more like I would say I would say that the Hillsborough County government has a much more noticeable investment in like the lifestyle of the residents being good. So like investment in the libraries, investment in the parks, stuff like that. Whereas in Miami, everything is geared towards the hospitality industry. And that, so everything is all about making the city as appealing to tourists as possible. Okay. So, um, so the nightlife, the restaurants, the clubs, um, the, the pretty people scene, the exotic cars scene, it, it's definitely much more materialistic in Miami. Definitely much more, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and I think crime is probably, I have not looked it up, but I would be surprised if crime is <laughs> I would be shocked if crime is worse in Tampa than it was in Miami uh, Miami had some of the worst crime in the country for a city its size so <laughs> all right so that's step one so that's the journaling card that we're doing on this one we're doing it here instead of here so that it can help stabilize so it stabilizes this crack and then when I put a photo on the back It'll be like it never happened, right? So the, it won't look like a Franken paper forever. Well, there was a while a while back, and I'm talking like ten or ten or more years ago, probably fifteen years ago at this point. There was a contest to redesign the logo of the city of Miami, the seal of the city of Miami. And the humor writer, Dave Barry, submitted a mosquito carrying a machine gun. And that is what won, because he's a famous writer for the Miami Herald. Um, of course, that's not what they went with. <laughs> but that is what won, I believe. Now, Miami's crime is very much located to specific areas of the city 
and those areas of the city are not commonly visited by tourists so the the because a lot of the crime is drug related so the people involved in the drug trade they don't do it where the tourists are um because there's a much higher police presence where the tourists are to make sure tourists are safe so um there's sort of like miami is one of those cities where neighborhood specific neighborhoods are are where that kind of stuff is located and you know pretty much where they all are and then you just um unless you have business there for some reason you just don't really like go to that part of town um was how it sort of seemed to be when we were there you know everyone just knew the the blocks to avoid you know it's all very localized i guess so it wasn't like just going about your normal business you were always in danger i guess But, I mean, that being said, like, I never witnessed any crime the whole time I was there, guys. <laughs> so, it, I think if you yourself are not involved in the drug trade, you will be fine. Because the crime is mostly drug trade related. So, I definitely think it's like, certain cities have these reputations, Miami being one of them, as, you know, if you step foot on the wrong sidewalk, you're going to be dead. That's not the case, you know it's the people who are are getting killed regularly are involved in drug the drug trade so so yeah it's my advice for surviving in florida stay away from the drug trade alligators and drunk men that's true and hydrate and hydrate and stay hydrated so, yeah, so I think that Miami being this, like, crime-ridden city, I mean, yes, it does deserve that reputation. It does have a high violent crime rate um, compared to other cities its size. And the police suck in Miami, for sure. They suck really bad. Um, however, like, if you're just living there, you'll be fine. You know, you'll be fine. I, I was fine. You know, I th lived next to a drug dealer for a while, if he wasn't a drug dealer, he was a pimp. He was definitely one or the other. And he was perfectly pleasant and he never bothered us. So <laughs> he just, he never bothered us. But it was him and 20 girls who lived in that apartment. And people came and went constantly all throughout the day. So drug dealer or pimp, I don't know. Yeah, hydrate has a whole new meaning now. Okay. So, now that we've got all of our journaling cards, we need to pick our four, um, our four three by four cards and our four four by six cards. All right, so we can finally use the Merry Christmas one this time. We can use the Joy one. We can use the December 25th one. We can use all of those because we're getting like, clo we're close, you know, the 24th is in here, so. Maybe let's not use the December 25th one. Maybe I'll save that for the last page to incorporate it somehow. These are the ones I resized, yes. These were four by six cards. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So it was totally worth doing that because we got so many good options from doing it. All right, so now we're gonna do the four by six cards. The word joy would be cuter on the brown grid. I agree. Are you trying to tell me I should cut it out? Are you trying to make me do work? I don't like this anymore. I think I'm going to shrink that one down. All right, there we go. Good enough. Good enough. So, do I want to put these joysticks? Haha, -ha, these joysticks. Okay, these. Joysticks on the snowflake is the question. What that's what Jill means when she says the brown grid. See, so she's saying, wouldn't that joy look cuter on this brown grid? If we cut these out and move them from the white grid to the snowflake grid. Because she likes to make me do extra work. Ah. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to, that's what I'm here for, she says. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the center of the O. Because it's a lot easier to cut out the center of letters before you cut the letters out. Okay, this, this, this knife has to go. Part of my problem is the knife. It's just totally dull. All right. So, get rid of the knife. I have to think of a PETAFest project too. And that just reminded me of that. When I'm planning my 2020 projects, I got to plan a PETAFest project, but something small and small as a gift. Some like a little one sheeter kind of like I do for, um, like I do for, um, for Scrappy Bowl.
Have I ever made a lap book? No, I have not. I have not made a lap book. That could be fun. I should do some more. I want to do some more simple projects in 2020. Stuff that you can do easily to give to people for things. So that like something that has no theme, but like if you have a friend who's accomplishing something, like say they're retiring or they're moving or whatever, you know, you have something simple you could do um, with whatever paper would work for that person in that occasion. And a lap book probably would. The other thing I get a ton of requests for is an explosion box. A lap book, Jill, is, um, it's a, it's like a lar it's a lar the book itself would be larger, kind of like a coffee table book size, but it's only like one thing. So it just, it just folds out and it's just all the different elements are all on the one thing. So it doesn't have pages. It would have flips and flaps in that all the, the you could put different interactive elements with flips and flaps, but what it wouldn't have is pages. So yeah, it could have flips and flaps, absolutely. Still. And interactive elements. Um, is a lap book similar to a folio? I mean, well, folios could have pages. Um, the thing Tim Holtz made is sort of like that, although that's more like a folio, I would say. With the lap book, think of it more like... What's the fun thing about the lap book is when you open it, looking for and discovering all the different things to open and how they all open. So you're holding it on your lap or more likely a, a kid is holding it on their lap. Yeah, little hidey holes, little compartments. And then you and, and it's about variety. So like a pocket that opens that closes with a button, a pocket that closes with a flap, a pocket that closes with a, you know, di all different kinds of closures. Cuz it's it's about interactivity and discovery. I tend to think of it as something designed more for kids um who want stuff to do. You know what I mean? But of course it can be designed for adults. Different textures. All right, so I'm going to start inking this while it's still attached. I'm going to kind of ink as I go because it's just a little bit easier when there's still some paper to get your ink off, inking done. Jill just wanted to make sure I wouldn't be done before she was done with her laundry. That's why she made me do this. <laughs> Jill. 
Rachel says a true statement. Jan says I made a couple car books. Yes, it's very much like a road trip book or a car book. Yes. Mm hmm. That's what I think of when I think of it, Jan. Those road trip books kids have to keep them busy in the car to just make something like that, but with their memories so that they can see themselves while they're discovering and, and whatnot. Of course, it's still interesting for adults. I'm not saying you can't make it for adults. Now very carefully, gonna cut that last little bit with my knife. Okay, and I'm gonna glue this. Glue this like so in this corner over these snowflakes. All right, so I saw Hobbs and Shaw over the weekend, and I was expecting it to just be silly fun, and this is going to maybe make me sound old, but movies are so long, guys. Why are movies so long now? Like... I remember in the 90s, if you wanted to watch a stupid action film, they were like 90 minutes. You know, this was two and a half hours. It, I, I like Dwayne Johnson. I love Idris Elba. Um, I like Jason Statham. I don't need to watch them punch each other for two and a half hours. It's okay if they just punch each other for one and a half hours. It's okay. They're trying to compete with YouTube. Is that it? Also, I haven't seen any Fast and Furious movies other than the first one. But I did not know that... The franchise had gone a little bit sci-fi or I or it's just this movie is a little bit sci-fi but Idris Elba is a transhumanist which is um, people who um, want us to become cyborgs and want us humans to be to move beyond just being people like as we are people to be fused with machines to have artificial intelligence supplement our our human intelligence that's that's what a transhumanist is so he's a, a transhumanist both philosophically and like literally so um there's definitely a sci-fi element to it in his augmentations and everything he can do because of them So he's kind of like the Terminator. Well, no, because the Terminator is a straight up robot. 
but he's like a combination of a robot and a person. Um, I mean, he was super cool. He was super cool, but he, I was like, when did this become sci-fi? So Chaka says that the last Fast and Furious she watched was not like that at all. They were all just human. So there weren't like, so there wasn't a science fiction element to it. So maybe this is new with the Hobbs and Shaw spinoff. Because he's part of an organization that looks like it's going to be the big bad for the Hobbs and Shaw movies for a while. Idris Elba is, I mean called Aetion. Aetion is, they're all transhumanists in Aetion. Um, and their goal in this movie was to, they had engineered a super virus that would kill what they called weak humans. Um, and then the humans that lived, the strong humans would be converted into like robots like, well, cyborgs like Idris Elba, and then that would be the new human race, and that would also stop climate change, because so many people would be dead that the carbon would go down or whatever. So their goal was to, say, to improve humanity by turning us all into partial robots if we survived the super virus and the planet. And <laughs> this organization, this multinational organization with billions of dollars and an army of superhuman people are defeated by Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham so <laughs> um, punching them basically and I mean I would not want to be punched by the rock Okay, but you know who else I would not want to be punched by? Just straight up Idris Elba. Okay, not even transhumanist Idris Elba. I wouldn't want to be punched by regular Idris Elba. <laughs> so, so I don't know that I believe that in a punching match between superhuman Idris Elba and Dwayne Johnson, just as he is, if I think Dwayne Johnson would win that, I don't think I do, actually. I don't think I do. Well, so sometime between 2011 and now, I, do, I wouldn't want to be punched, period. Yeah, I mean, I also would not want to be punched just in general, even by someone with very baby arms. So <laughs> they are very good looking people to look at punching each other. The, it, you know, it's the fight scenes are definitely fun. I think that's probably the, the, the whole point of the movie anyway, is just the punching, you know. But that's what I'm saying. We only really need like 90 minutes of punching, you know. You'd let Idris Elba punch you. <laughs> I mean, there's a variety of other things I would prefer he do before he got around to punching, if, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that sounds all kinds of wrong once again the stream has gone off the rails but that's okay So what I will give the movie is two thumbs up in the eye candy department um, because if I do have to watch two and a half hours of punching, um, if Idris Elba is involved, then that is a huge improvement. <laughs> that is a huge improvement. Let's get back to crafting. The joy looks really good there. Well, and the, there, there is a scene where he's like, when they're starting to realize that they can't do anything to him, that he just like 
st he's just standing there and he's like, what are you going to do? I'm black Superman. And I was like, you know, I think we should have a black Superman movie. And I think it should star Idris Elba and we should make like five of them. So. So please make this happen, Warner Brothers. Please make this happen. So that was that was my big takeaway from the movie is, yeah, no, no, no. Where where more black Superman, please. Less Hobbs and Shaw. So. Um, I did want Idris Elba to win just because I I didn't want him to not be in the next film if they were going to make another one of these. <laughs> I didn't want it to be some other villain, you know, <laughs> but so obviously my priorities were not where the film wanted them. Speaking of Superman and eye candy, you're looking forward to The Witcher. I'm very curious about The Witcher as well. On Netflix. Um, Henry Cavill is going to be in those as The Witcher. Which is a supernatural monster hunter. Witcher is a job and you hunt down monsters and witches and stuff and the guy who plays um the guy who plays Superman Henry Cavill is gonna play um his name is escaping me right now it starts with a G um but the main dude from the Witcher series Geralt And The Witcher is a series of Polish books and also a Polish video game. Yeah, Geralt of Rivia. Jill says, man, that joy looks good. What a wonderful idea. Yes, Jill, it does look good. Congratulations on your brilliant idea. It only took me a half an hour to do it, but at least we were able to discuss um, the cinematic masterpiece that is Hobbs and Shaw. So well, it wasn't a total, a total loss of time. <laughs> So yeah, we saw that this weekend on a whim. We were just wandering around. We're like, well, should we do something? What should we do? Is there a movie showing right now? And there was, and it was that one. And so we saw it. So that's how we make our life choices around here, you guys. That's how we do it. Our eye candy preferences. Yeah. I wonder who else will be in the Witcher TV show. Maybe I'll look it up later. See what's going on. The, the books are extremely violent. So is the game. I assume the TV show will be as well. 
um, the books are an allegory for the Soviet occupation of Poland. You recommend Blinded by the Light? I, look, I looked at that, but it wasn't showing at the time we were going. Have I read Anti-Fragile? No. But I almost missed that question up top. I have not. Is that like a cyberpunk transhumanist book? Because I do, I, I'm definitely okay with that as a genre. I was just surprised to see it in Fast and Furious. You know what I mean? Like, that's not... I was like, isn't this a car chase movie? Why are we having cyberpunk transhumanists? All right. But our, our theater is showing Blinded by the Light, and I did see it. So I'll read more about that as well. I was looking at my list of movies that I saw in 2019 and my list of movies that I've seen so far in 2020, and I need to pick up the pace because I have not been going to the movies as much in 2019. But I, t let me be honest, I don't know that I thought that the movies were as good in 2019. I mean, 2018 and 2019. I don't know if I thought the movies looked as good this year as they did last year or what, or what, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I need to pick, I need to pick up the pace. My sister bought, she got a bunch of gift cards. Someone gave her a bunch of Fandango gift cards and she bought tickets. Yes, Herbie, Herbie the love bug. Okay. Guys, I've been thinking about the book club some more. If you guys are interested in that at all, let me know. And what kind of books you want to read. I already know that people don't want to read really scary books. We would not be reading really scary books. We would be reading probably literary fiction would be the genre that we read the most would be my guess. Unless you want it to be something more specific like a detective one or like a, you know that sort of thing although there's such a wide variety within detective from like the cozy mysteries to the really like super serious ones so what is body love jill All right, so the reason I use tape on these instead of ATG is because since they're on the, um, oh, interesting. So anti-fragile is about Super bugs and some systems creating chaos and disorder. Interesting. Yeah, I like that kind of stuff. <gasps> oh no, I used the blue one. Ah. Ah. I 
I'll check it out. I like end of the world stuff. Okay, so we've got those down. Now we just need to do these ones. If you like end of the world stuff, just watch CNN. I don't watch mainstream news of any kind, of any shape. Because, as I mentioned before, I don't think the Republican Party represents conservatives, and I don't think that the Democratic Party represents progressives, and I think there's something wrong with both parties in that I think they only care about money at this point, so they're so sick, you know, they're so sick, and I don't know how to, I don't know how they get unsickened, you know. But, um, yeah, they only care about money. They don't care about people. And I think the only way to fix them is to get rid of them. Both of them. Start over. They only care... Uh, yes, that's true. Jill says they don't just care about money. They care about power, too. That's true. But they've been sickened by money and power. So they no longer care about people. And they don't care about your problems or fixing your problems. Um, they don't even understand your problems. Half of them are millionaires. Like, they're just... They're just corrupt to the point where they can't be uncorrupted. The very vast majority of them, we've got to get rid of both parties. They both have to get kicked to the curb. And I think all Americans you need, need to unite around this idea. Because, again, I don't think the Republicans are serving the conservatives any more then I think the Democrats are serving progressives. I think that Americans tend to be conservative or progressive and that progressives and conservatives can work together because there are areas where they overlap. And, and, but I don't think that Republicans are conservative and I don't think Democrats are progressive and Democrats and Republicans cannot work together. So they all, both, they all need to go. Both parties, every last one of them, out. And that's what I think. And so because of that, I don't watch mainstream media because those channels are either a mouthpiece for the Republican Party or they're a mouthpiece for the Democrat Party. And both parties are so gross at this point. I just can't, I just can't, I just cannot deal with it. I cannot deal with it. So, um, yeah, they've got to go. They've got to go. So... Um, from top, from the, from the top down, from the top down, every last stinking one of them until they can remember they're supposed to serve. They're servants. That's the word used to describe them throughout all of the country's history. Can you imagine them identifying with that word at this point? Do you think... Any of them consider themselves your servants? No. They think they're kings and queens. That's what they think. They think they're monarchs. So. Anyways, that's your politics for today. Apologies if you came here to get away from politics. <laughs> But uh, yes, they're high school students. Yes, they're high school students. Ugh. 
I mean, we would probably get better results by flipping a coin by, than by letting them decide anything. So, one of the things that I have done is I have refused to register as either a Democrat or a Republican. Um, and that's a problem for me right now because Florida is a closed primary state, so you can't vote in the primary unless you're a member of the party, which of course I think is un-American. I think that I think that I shouldn't have to be give my loyalty to a party in order to tell them who I think would be a better president from amongst their choices. So my big decision right now is even though I made a commitment to not support either the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, should I change my party affiliation to Democrat to vote in the Democrat primary? Or what? I don't know. I don't. I'm still trying to decide. Because I don't want to, you know, say that I think that I support them, but I would like to have a voice in who runs against Trump. So who knows? I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm going to do there. If I'm going to stick to my principles, it's hard because Florida is a swing state. It's so, you know, you, you, you do sometimes have a feeling. I don't know. Who knows? So I'll see. But that's what that's what I say, guys. We need a we need a massive, massive change. Plus, both these parties are old. Democrats formed in the 1830s. Republicans in the 1860s. Uh, you know, like this is the 21st century We're, you know, we're t two centuries on. We have totally different problems now. We need human centered ideas. You know, we need to put people first instead of corporations. There's a lot. By the time your primary comes, you expect the decision to be made. Yeah, I need to look up uh, when the Florida primary is. I haven't looked it up yet because I'm not currently eligible for it. I can't, I currently cannot vote in the primary because I'm not, um, because I'm not a Democrat. Um, and that, like I said, that's a decision I have to make. Florida, you can change your primary as many, uh, every 29, or you can change your party every, up until 29 days before a primary. So I have time to make this decision. Or you can change your party, I mean. And to change my party, all I have to do is go to the election website and change my party. It's not like I have to donate or prove or anything. So I just haven't decided what to do. But, um, so I need to look up, like, if Florida's on Super Tuesday, I should probably do it. And be like, all right, you made me choose. So here I am. I'm going to vote now. And then I'm that I'm peacing out. <laughs> so I'm leaving the party again. Goodbye. But anyway, that is a least time off. So, but yeah, that's my, that's, uh, I just, I don't know what else to, 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 I don't think there's any point in even trying to talk to these parties. You know, they, they are so entrenched in their old ideas and old relationships and old money and whatever. So. But I will also reiterate that the way that this changes is it's very important for everyone to find out when their local elections are and vote in your local elections because the way people become House of Representatives 
and senators and whatever else is by getting local experience a lot of the time. And you want, you can, you have much more control over your local people. Sometimes those elections are decided by only, you know, a few hundred votes. So you can get rid of the grifters, the people who look like they just want to be professional politicians because they, they want money, they want power. You can get rid of them when the, while they're still local before they get stuck in Washington for 30 years. So that's why your local elections are really important, guys. Always vote in your local elections. You know, it may not always feel like it, but your governor has way, way, way more power over your everyday life than the president does. I'm not saying don't vote in the national election. I'm saying vote in all of them. Always vote. So Jill's asking me the one that's the Franken folder, this one. If I need to put something on the back, I'm not going to put something on the back right now. Um, because, and I'm not going to put something um, right here. Um, I will say that my house person, um, while I do not agree with him on 90 plus percent of his decisions that he makes which is I understand that I'm out of step with my area so he is actually doing what the majority of the people in the area want as far as I can tell he does see he emails us every week a question to, to ask us what we think about something and I have never ever had a representative ask me my opinion as much as this guy so um, I'm not saying, I mean, it doesn't do me any good because he never does what I want, <laughs> but I mean, I appreciate that he seems to actually want to know, or at least he pretends to want to know, which is more than any of my others have ever done. Um, anyway, so when I put the photo on the back of this, that'll fix it. And when I put the photo on the back of this, that'll fix it. So I'm not going to worry about those right now. Visually, it doesn't look the best at this moment, but by the time the album is done, it'll look good. You know what I mean? Jill was asking, do I need to cover the other sides of my Franken folder? And no, I only need to cover one so it won't fall apart. And then the other one can wait until I have my photos. Kimberly, we're finishing up the... Um, we're finishing up the, um, the paper bag album. Well, I want to, Jill, Jill said you'll have to do a walkthrough of this once you get photos in it. Well, he, he, he publishes the results of the, of the polls he asks and I, and he typically does what the majority of people want. It's just that I'm almost never in the majority now. So I'm like, that's what I mean when I say that he just, he never does what I want, but he can't do what I want and what everyone else wants if we want opposite things. So, um, you know, somebody has got to not get what they want in, in that case. Um, so we are doing the inserts now. We finished the inserts for the paper bag album for the December daily. And Jill's saying you'll have to do a walkthrough of this after you get the photos in it. I definitely do want to do that. Um, I definitely do want to do either a... Um, one thing I thought of was getting the Epson picture mate because we've, we've talked about... Um, the Epson picture mate and how it compares to the Canon selfie. I thought about getting the picture mate and like sitting here with my phone once I had all my December photos and the project life app and printing photos on the Epson and putting them in. So you could like maybe so I could see how easy that workflow was. So that's one thing I thought of doing. Um, but then the other thing I thought of doing is just printing out all my photos on my big 13 by 19 sheets on my um, big photo printer and then having a day where I, I put them all in the in the book. So I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on what you what you would prefer. So I'm going to put my folders, my inserts in my bags. Remember, guys, that I have put together a um, playlist. Well, it would certainly be cheaper with the big guy because I would not have to, 
um, I would not have to buy a an Epson uh, picture rate, but I was thinking about getting one to do a review um, because I've been recommending the selfie for four by six printer. I don't have a selfie, but I have a bunch of friends with them who love them. So that's what I've been recommending, but there was someone, I wish I could remember who it was, who commented they have both and they say the Epson's way better. So I was thinking about getting both of them, but then I would end up with two printers that I don't need. So I don't know. My life is really hard, guys, is what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. The photo paper for the Canon and Epson is not cheap. <gasps> oh, I got to show you guys something. I got to show you guys something. Oh, did I recycle the carton already? Maybe it's in my recycling bin. Is it? Look what I found. So, you know the Koala paper, I told you guys when I tested all the papers for printing your own pattern paper at home, I said that the colors aren't 100% accurate, but that there is this Koala paper, it's super cheap, it's like half the price of Epson paper, and... Um, you can save a ton of money by get it, using it. Oh, guys, I got to talk to Walgreens. Hold on a second. All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. But whenever Walgreens calls me, I get paranoid because, you know, there's always something going on at the Walgreens. Um, don't the photo mate and selfie require certain paper packs? Yes, I think so. This is if you have some other kind of photo printer. But um, maybe it's a size thing. Like, do they just need four by six paper or is there something in the paper? I'm going to have to do more research clearly. But if you were looking for an inexpensive photo printer, this is, notice it's satin too, even. It's hard to find inexpensive satin paper, guys. Uh, 
Don't the, f yeah, is it special? I'm gonna have to Google then. I'm gonna have to Google. All right. But yeah, I found this. I haven't printed anything on it. I'll have to pr try, try it, but um, the Epson luster paper that I've been using, it's so much cheaper than that. I'm, I've just become a cheapskate, I guess. Okay, so um, anyways, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna do another recording break because we finished all the, well, before I do a recording break, let me do a flip through. No, I'll do a flip through at the end. Um, I'm going to do a recording break and then we're going to come back and do the pocket, uh, pockets and fl flaps on the bases of the paper bag. So, um, I will be right back. Actually, you guys don't go anywhere because those of you watching live, I mean, it's not going to change anything for you. Um, but I'm going to end this recording and I have created a playlist of all the videos in this. If you go look on my YouTube channel under playlist, you'll see one for all of the Christmas and July books. Thank you so much for watching. And in my next video, I will have the, um, you know, the, we'll do the pockets and flaps on the, um, last two bags and then we'll be done with all the bags. Uh, so we'll be very close to the end of this book. So thanks so much. Have a great afternoon. Bye now.